After years of intensive monetary accommodation, are we standing on the verge of a prompt global normalization and liquidity withdrawal? We do not think so. In a world where central banks keep tabs on each other's every move, the normalization process seems ready to unfold in the same order the pace-up of easing proceeded. The US should lead the way. The economic recovery is there well advanced, and the labor market has fully recovered. Only wage inflation is lagging, but the 4.3% unemployment rate should improve employee bargaining power soon. The Fed could then continue its normalization on two fronts. First, balance sheet reduction could be initiated as early as in September. Second, rate hikes could continue afterwards once and if the fiscal push is clarified. ECB and BOJ should on their end take their time to reduce accommodation, as long as recovery and inflation are not clearly secured. Mario Draghi in Frankfurt and the duo Abe Kuroda in Tokyo fought tooth and nail to obtain their green light on their respective QEs. They should see no point in sapping the progress achieved at arm's length over the past four years. The ECB may announce by December a QE extension by one year, while initiating a slow tapering. Purchases could be reduced from a monthly pace of 60 billion euro today to 40 billion in the first semester, 20 billion in the second, and a conclusion of the program in December 2018. This schedule would respect capital key and holding constraints, while allowing the ECB to be an active buyer in markets during the Italian elections next year. The BOJ could remain two steps back and taper its QQE only through 2019. Despite a stretch program where the BOJ buys 1% of the country's equity per capitalization each year and holds 40% of Japanese sovereign bonds, core inflation is back down to 0%. We believe that Abe cannot afford to claim victory on his first arrow just yet, despite elections looming large. Patience is required, and now that the BOJ has exhausted all monetary tools, it may prefer holding firm on its curve control policy for a little longer. Our central scenario hence sees US Treasury 10-year yields gearing back up faster than bond yields and drifting away from anchored JGB yields. Competitive devaluation would then extend, forcing the US to continue exporting their growth through a strong US dollar.